Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks, and in today's lesson, I'm going to begin a new series of tutorials in collaboration with my good friend, Alan Friedman. Alan is a partner in Friedman Canterberg & Company, certified public accountants based in Hartford, Connecticut. Their specialty is working with clients in the music products industry. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take one of Alan's spreadsheets that he used in a recent seminar. I'm going to show you how to use conditional formatting. We're going to use conditional formatting to apply this alternate row shading. Alternate row shading is sometimes known as green bar shading. If you remember the old um, mainframe computer uh, printout paper, it had green bars to separate the alternate rows. Now, affectionately, Knowing Alan and many of his accounting uh, compatriots, what they probably did to get this effect of alternate row shading is they went through and inefficiently selected the first row that they wanted to shade. And then I'm using Excel 2007, Excel 2010 here on the Home tab of the ribbon. They went through in the font group and from the drop down for the cell shading they selected a color and then they went through and they meticulously selected the next row well this is a very inefficient way to do this i'll use Control z to undo that last action i'm going to show you how you can apply this effect using conditional formatting that uses a formula this is the formula that i'm going to use now it may not make sense to you I'll show you how this works and later on in the lesson I'll break it down piece by piece. The first trick to using conditional formatting is make a selection. So in this case what I want to do is I want to select the labels row 1 through row 12. But I also want to select two additional columns that are adjacent to this. So I've made my selection before I begin to apply conditional formatting using a formula. Home tab of the ribbon in Excel 2007, Excel 2010, and if you use in Excel 2003, I'll show you how to do this a little bit later on in the lesson. All right, so we've made our selection, home tab of the ribbon over here in the styles group. Notice that we have a command conditional formatting, but it has a drop down arrow. Click the drop down arrow to open up a menu selection. What we want to do is create a new rule. The rule that we're going to create is going to use a formula, and this is the formula that we're going to use. So format values where the formula evaluates to true. This is extremely important. You just can't use any formula with conditional formatting. It must produce a result that is either true or false, and when the condition is met, in other words, the formula evaluates to true, then we will apply the formatting. So all formulas begin with the equal sign, and I'm just going to copy this formula, equals mod, and you don't have to understand this at this point, left parentheses, row, which is another function left and right parentheses. The arguments for the row are going to be applied to all of the cells in the selection. The argument for the mod function will be applied to all the cells that we've already selected comma to separate for the second required argument. I'm going to type in 2. The reason that I'm typing in 2 is I want every second row, if it evaluates to true, to get specific formatting. Close the right parentheses and then put in equals 0. You'll understand this as we progress along. So for those cells in this range where the formula evaluates to true, I want to apply this formatting. I want to apply it to the fill for the cells in this range. And let's use this yellow shading. Click OK. Click OK to close the conditional formatting dialog box and there you see. So every second row has that formatting applied to it because it met the condition true for this formula. Now if all you're interested in is getting the alternate row shading using conditional formatting, stop the video now, make a copy of this formula, and you're ready to go. If you want to learn how this actually works, now I'm going to break down the two functions. The modulus function, the MOD function, and the row function. Let's begin with the row function because that's a lot easier to understand. If I type over here equals row, 
left parentheses and I want to get the row number for a cell I select the cell in this row right parentheses and there you go now let me use the autofill um, button over here so if I move my mouse to the lower right corner over here and double click you see it's going to give me the row number now what about this crazy modulus uh, function all right let's come over here and say equals mod left parentheses and at this point what I like to do is I like to use control a to bring up the function arguments dialog box you could also click the function wizard to open this up so with the mod function which is sometimes called the modulus function it's going to return the remainder after a number is divided by a divisor now that's a mouthful if you think about it this way if we take the number 4 and divide it by a divisor, in this case 2, so 4 divided by 2 is going to result in a whole number. There will be no remainder. On the other hand, 5 divided by a divisor is going to give us a remainder. All right, so what I want to do for the number is, on, in this case, I'm going to re refer to this cell over here, which I already used the row function in, and I want to divide that by 2. That's the divisor. Click OK. So what I'm going to get when I use autofill is a series of 1s or zeros. Now you'll start to understand why the equal 0, in other words, true, is going to come into play. So over here, let's apply uh, this over here. I'm going to make the selection over here. I'm just going to call this Sales. Control Enter just to get some text in here. What I now want to do is I'm going to use conditional formatting for this selection. So I'll make my selection, Home tab of the room in Excel 2007, Excel 2010, drop down menu for conditional formatting, New Rule. I want to use a formula. The formula can't be any formula. It must evaluate to either true or false. So equals mod left parentheses row, which is another function, left and right parentheses, comma to separate the required argument. So every second row I want to find, but I want to make sure that they evaluate to zero. And then when that condition is met, in other words, when the result is true or a zero, then the formatting that I wish to apply, and I'll select a different color over here. I'll select this color for the background fill for those cells. Click OK. Click OK to close the dialog box. And there you go. All right, now I promised to show you how to do this in Excel 2003. Once again, I'm in Excel 2003, make a selection. I can't stress how important that is. So make your selection. And this time in Excel 2003 and earlier, go to the Format menu. Select Conditional Formatting. And here's the important part. Notice that for Condition 1, what we want to do is select the drop-down formula is. Equals mod, left parentheses, row, left and right parentheses, comma, two, right parentheses, equals zero. When this formula for the selection evaluates to true, then the formatting that we wish to apply, and in this case it's going to be for patterns. I'll select, um, well, let's select this color over here as the fill. Click OK, click OK to close the dialog box, and there you go. Now, the beauty of using conditional formatting is that if you extend your series, you see how the conditional formatting extends automatically. Let's switch back over here into uh, Excel 2010. So if I make a selection over here, and if I continue down, you see how the formatting automatically extends. Now, let's just say that I have over here Danny and I just want to make a copy of this down and I want to apply the conditional formatting to every other row. All I have to do is select a single cell that has the conditional formatting. Right mouse click and say copy. Come over here and make the selection. Right mouse click and what we want to do is we want to open up the paste special dialog box. And in this case what we want to do is we want to apply the formats. So click OK click OK 
and there you go. So in this case, if it is an even number where there is no remainder, in other words, the remainder for the mod function is going to be equal to zero, it gets that shading. Now, let me come back here, and I'll use Control-Tab to bring me back over here to another Excel workbook, which was my opening workbook. If you want to learn more about Alan's uh, um, worksheets that he makes available, go to his website. So for the Friedman Cannonberg worksheet, I'll come over here and I'll point you over here and just say that go to fkco.com and then go over here onto the resources, select seminar handouts. I think I went a little bit too far. Okay, uh, resources, seminar handouts, and this is the um, uh, the function or, or the the worksheet that I've been using so I'll continue this series in the next lesson but I'll also close with a plug to go and visit my online shopping website shop.thecompanyrocks.com where you can learn tips similar to this as well as 50 others and I'll look for you in the next episode in the series